Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Tonight we have a little bit of a double header because on one hand it is a review of a fragrance that I have yet to review on the channel and on another hand it is a somber moment of remembrance of the founder of this brand who passed away and when founders pass away in the past I have done condolence and remembrance videos. Uh, I did one when Francisco Robinetta, Paco Rabanne passed away but I have not done one for this brand yet. Um, and, and it is the brand of Mask Mulatto. And if you follow fragrance news on the day, all right, if you're really on top of it, uh, then this is old news because he passed away a couple weeks ago. He passed away um, late in February of 2024, and it is now March the 6th. So it's been a little while since he passed away. Still very sad. He was very young, all, all things considered. You know, it's funny. Sometimes I talk to... Um, you know, older folks, and I'll say, hey, this person passed away, and they were 78, and they'll say, that's that guy was still young. So nowadays, young is relative with people living older and older, but he was very young. He was um, born in 1973, um, and so he, just a little background on him, by the way, like I said, he founded the House of Mask Milano, which on the channel so far, I have only reviewed La Tessa off of a sample, only a sample review off of La Tessa, and I enjoyed it. It was a very well-made Irish fragrance. The brand in general, I like. Um, I don't love, but I like, and there's there's a couple fragrances in general that are his most popular, and so sort of in remembrance of, um, of Alessandro Brun, he apparently, from people who know him, they say he was brilliant, they say he was full of life, they say he was energetic, that he had a huge passion for fragrances, and you know, I think there is a lot to be said for somebody who creates something that is left behind. You know, as human beings, we always want to have some sort of a legacy. Some people who don't have children leave that legacy through, you know, works. Or, you know, you think about Andrew Carnegie. He had a child and he still left all his money to charity. And that's why you see all of these uh, Carnegie Hall libraries because of his philanthropic efforts. And so I think as human beings, we always want to leave something behind since, um, you know, our time on this earth is is pretty short when you think about it in the grand scheme of things, very short when you think about it in the grand scheme of things. And so whether that be, you know, children, your, your heirs, if you will, whether it's going to be a company you found, whether it's going to be philanthropic works or a fragrance house, which if you love fragrances, what better way to leave something behind? This will always be in the history books. People who write about fragrances and talk about fragrances and love fragrances will continually talk about something that you created. So um, on one hand, he has an amazing legacy. On another hand, it's a very sad story that he passed away so young. Uh, he was born in Milan, apparently. So the, the fragrance Mask Milano literally fits perfectly into his story. Apparently he liked um, listening to music and writing poetry with his mother. And he, his father was a glass blower artisan in a workshop who created blown glass, basically. And uh, he spent some time in England. He loved the English and Gothic literatures. And um, he was a professor, apparently, at a university. If you've ever heard him talk, he's done YouTube interviews. I'm sure you'll still be able to find them on some of the bigger channels. He never came on my channel. My channel was still too small. Although I have had some pretty decent-sized name. I would love to have someone like him on the channel. I love having people in the industry come on, on the channel. Um, but it's a, uh, it's a, it's, you can tell he is very well-spoken, very passionate, uh, just a brilliant mind, if you will. And he put that to work in creating something special with this brand. Um, and so today we're going to review what I consider to be probably his most popular release from the house. Um, and I'm not basing that off of sales figures or anything like that because I don't have access to that information, but just based on sort of what I hear in FragCom and the way people talk about this brand, I think this is probably their most popular fragrance, and it is called Tango by the House of Mask Milano. Now, um, you can see I put a pretty damn good dent in this little discovery atomizer. Um, someone was giving me a hard time because I said that on another fragrance, and don't forget, I have a ton of fragrances you don't see all of them up here, um, but I have a ton of fragrances in my collection. So for me, this is a damn good dent. That means I've worn this multiple, multiple times as my scent of the day. Uh, and if you don't know, uh, with Mask Milano, they recently in 2023 released a series of oud fragrances based on their biggest hit fragrances. So still to come on the channel is a review of my favorite Mask Milano fragrance called Russian Tea. And um, this is their older style bottle, which I absolutely love. I like the new bottles as well, but the new bottles were only 35 mils. This was 100 mils. Um, and, and so 
Uh, even though I like the style of the new bottle, I prefer this. You got way more value for money. They would put the perfumer's name on top. So you can see it says Russian tea and it says Julian Raskinet right here. Um, and so uh, they do list the perfumers and the perfumer for, for Mask Milano Tango uh, is Cecile Zerokian. Okay, so this was created in 2014. It's kind of um, advertised as like a spicy resinous fragrance, I guess, or, or an amber, a spicy resinous amber. Um, and so we'll go through the note listing, but I do want to say I, I thought about making this like a comparison video because I have the um, Tango Oud right here. And I'll tell you what, I had a lot more respect for this house. And, and I have to be honest, even though this is part review and part honor of Alessandro Brun's life, um, I, I really lost a lot of respect for the house when they, when they did this. You know, they, they put these out, these Ouds, at like $675, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about Oud in, in perfume when we talk about Tango because I think there is a little bit of an Oud Accord in even the original Tango. Um, and I just thought this was a very bland effort. I don't think they the brand put enough of their heart and soul into this. This felt like a money grab to me. It just did as an outsider. And so far, the ones that I've smelled, very disappointing. Uh, no way in hell would I spend $675. I don't know if I would spend $200. I, I probably wouldn't, to be honest with you. Um, but I'm, I'm going to do a either separate video talking about Mask Milano Tango Oud and Russian uh, Tea Oud and, and these other ones that are popular like they did um, they did uh, Love Kills and Mandala Oud, okay? So I'm, I'm probably going to have to do a separate video instead of just doing a comparison video because it's not fair to the original Tango to have the Ouds overshadow it. Um, but just so you know, that is something that the house did, which I thought was a something that tarnished the brand, in my personal opinion. If they were going to do something like this, they should have um, taken their time and done it properly. And, and I'm not saying that there's not real Oud in here because maybe there is. You know, maybe there is expensive oud in here, but the way it's blended doesn't smell like that to me. You know exactly where I'm going with this. If you've been following some of my reviews, you know that not having real oud does not deter me. An oud accord can still be done very well, as you've seen from some of my recent reviews. Um, but I think these are done very poorly, but we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. So, but let's talk about Tango as a fragrance, okay? So now that the rest in peace and condolences and... I'm sure they will continue to pour in for Alessandro Brun, and, I, and I'll be very interested to see what happens with the house. It's an interesting philosophy. For those of you who don't know, um, the way that they describe it is that Alessandro and Ricardo, the two founding members of Mask Milano, um, says they do not intend to create a myth, a bestseller, a one-size-fits-all perfumes for everyone. everyone. Rather, they aim to create a collection of perfumes with a soul each one unique, like actors alongside the leading character in every scene of an opera. It says some actors alongside the leading character as well as elements of the set are changing in, in the same way in our lives. We can change the mask, and we're going to talk a little bit about masks, our look, lifestyle, friendships, uh, the tone of our voice, mannerisms, yet we could never part from our innermost sensitivity. So that's just a little blurb kind of on on. Uh, on the brand perfumes wear to wear like a second skin the perfume behind the mask um, So let's talk a little bit about so opera was obviously a big thing for mask Milano, which makes perfect sense with the uh, Milan Opera House um, And so this fragrance basically is talked about ad nauseum in Fragcom. You can see a ton of reviews It's now officially 10 years old from 2014 and um, and so when you first spray, what you're going to get is you're going to get this amber fragrance that has little flecks of uh, bits and pieces of uh, little little taps if you want to stay with the whole tango theme. Just imagine a woman tapping her shoes and when she taps her shoes, you get a little hint of leather. Or, you know, when she does a spin, that peppery cumin hits you in the opening. Um, but it is cut with enough rose and spices and, and other um, ambers and patchouli and stuff like that, where the, you know, if you were, it, it, so the cumin is something that a lot of people focus on in Tango, okay? So where I'm going with this is that 
Um, if you've smelled some of her other works, uh, I don't think the cumin is as exaggerated as some people make it out to be. Some people make this out to be a huge, animalic, challenging, sweaty, hard to wear cumin. Not for me. Um, I think that you will get the cumin, if you're an experienced nose and you're really paying attention when you first spray, you will get the cumin in the beginning. It's there. There's, it's undoubtedly there, okay? But um, it is not this big star of the show, not in my opinion. In fact, more of what I get when I wear Tango now, because I'm familiar with Cecile Zeropian's work, and some people say that it's a sham, you can't tell if a perfumer has made one fragrance versus the next. You can't tell a perfumer style. I disagree on that fact. Uh, I think it would be very hard to just give someone a fragrance and say, which perfumer made this? But I think if you know a perfumer's work, you will definitely start to pick up breadcrumbs. You'll, you'll pick up clues. You'll pick up accords that they've created, that they've reused. And um, there are little touches of what I would consider to be this Middle Eastern style amber accord. Uh, and um, not just oud, but if you've smelled other Middle Eastern fragrances, like for example, if you smelled Cecile Zerokian's work for Amouage, Epic Woman, I've done a comparison video on this between Epic Woman 56 or 53, whatever it is, 56, I think, and the Eau de Parfum, which I have here. This is a vintage Eau de Parfum, uh, when it was still Oman Perfumery LLC before it became Oman or, or Amouage SAOC. So this is an older bottle, even though it is a magnetic cap. Uh, but I love this stuff. I think this is Cecile Zerokian's best work. Her first work was her best work, in my opinion. Um, and she did have help on this, so it's not really fair just crediting it to Cecile Zerokian. Um, but if you've smelled Epic Woman, and if you've smelled another one of her works, which I will discuss in this review called Shay Duna by the House of Pure Distance, Shay Duna. Um, Epic Woman came in 2009. Tango came in 2014, Shea Duna came in 2016, so you can kind of see a little bit of a progression in her work, if you will, okay? Um, but you get this very similar Cecile Zerokian vibe, okay? There are lots of similarities. The rose and resins and ambers, I think, do enough to um, sort of tame, okay? This wild, um, sort of like... Um, uh, flecks of cumin and leather and the animalic parts that people, some reviewers really tend to highlight, at least on my skin, this is a tame beauty, all right? This is a easier to wear amber and the, the bits and pieces that hit you that are a little bit challenging, you will pick them up, but they almost feel like they hit you in a passing sensation, if that makes sense, okay? So it's almost like you're dancing the tango with a beautiful woman. I know this is going to be cliche because the name of the perfume is tango, but um, it, it ties it all together. Um, that rug really ties the room together, dude. I'm sorry, couldn't help myself. Um, so just imagine you're dancing the tango with a beautiful woman and mostly you smell her fragrance, okay? Because she's dancing and you're right up on each other and obviously she is uh, perspirating when she's dancing and every now and then, maybe she didn't put enough deodorant on, maybe she put it on early in the day and it's at night or whatever it is, but you know, every now and then, even though you can tell she's trying to cover it up because she is dancing like a mother, okay? A whiff of funk comes through, just a whiff, all right? Uh, but it's almost like more of a suggestion. So here, let me read you what the brand says about Tango. Um, and, and you'll kind of get where I think I'm going with this. So it says, whispers all around you. The party is merry. The soft music in the background gets gradually louder. A crescendo, a glass, another glass. Ronnie Meal, inebriating, amber nectar, inebriating as the smell of the blooming jasmine carried along by the warm summer gusts. A crescendo. You meet her gaze. She whispers a couple words. You spot it. It is Lunfardo, your forehead drenched with sweat. Salt melts in the sugar of the liquor. The shuffling Gotan rhythm makes you brave. The night and the tango are on your side. A crescendo, deafening summons. The air gets even hotter. You are aware it will hurt you. Yet, you can't resist. You stand up and head towards the dance floor. Her face lights up with a smile that brightens the night. That is all you long for now. That is the, that is the official brand write-up. So they're definitely talking about dancing, liquor, um, you know, amber, nectar, and ine being inebriated, stuff like that, okay? Um, and, and so for me, 
That um, suggestion of the animalic notes while dancing is probably the best way I can think of to describe the way that the more challenging elements of uh, tango come through to me. It's really a mere suggestion. The cumin, yes, it's there, but very quickly the rest of the fragrance envelops it, all right? Um, more of the cinnamon and the ambers and benzoin and tonkas and vanillas and patchoulis and rose, definitely the rose. The rose is done in a very Middle Eastern style, which reminds me a lot of the way that the rose is done in Epic Woman. Uh, in, in, uh, tang in Tango, it's, it's uh, Damask Rose, if I'm not mistaken. Or, or I, actually, there is a disagreement between Parfumo and Fragrantica. So Tango on Parfumo says Damask Rose. Tango's note breakdown on Fragrantica says Turkish Rose. In Epic Woman, though, she used Damask Rose. And I was going to say the smell of the rose in Tango reminds me heavily, heavily of the rose in Epic Woman. So um, without being able to tell you right now the differences off the top of my head between Turkish Rose and um, Damask Rose, I will, I will, I would guess it's probably Damask Rose, okay? Um, or maybe they're similar enough where it doesn't matter. Or maybe they're even the same rose. Hell, I don't know. I'm not a rose expert. Um, but I will tell you that um, as your brain is picking up these little suggestions here and there, you're dancing the tango, okay? So you're focused on other things, whatever the hell you're focused on while you're dancing. Um, that's the way that the animalics are really executed here. A mere suggestion, a whiff, you know, as she spins or whatever it is, right? Um, you, you guys who know the tango probably could do a better metaphor than I'm doing right now with this, but I think the idea still stands. The way I'm trying to describe it, I'm happy with that, uh, descriptor for you guys. I think you'll understand the whole scent profile once I'm done. So, um... One of the things about this fragrance that I just have to mention is that I continually waffle back and forth, okay? So, number one, I like this fragrance, okay? You can see I put a damn good dent in this this little Discovery Atomizer. I'm pretty sure I bought this with my own money. I don't think somebody sent me this. Um, the newer Discovery Atomizers, for those of you who are into vintage or looking for older versions, I will tell you that the brand says that the... Um, Newer Discovery atomizers have a cap of brushed wood instead of this metal looking metal cap. So um, I don't know if there has been reformulations. I have no clue. I don't even think it matters with this brand, to be honest with you. Maybe it does, but it doesn't seem like it, it would too much in my opinion. But if you're into that, that may be a way to tell an older one of these Discovery atomizers versus a newer one. Okay, so... I waffle back and forth because the fragrance to me sometimes um, feels like you're watching an actor on a stage. And I know they mentioned masks earlier. And I guess, you know, if you're good enough to dance the tango, all right, in on stage in front of an audience or live on TV or wherever the hell they're going to broadcast it to viewers, you, you're going to put on that fake smile, right? Everyone has seen the fake smile or in, go to any of my thumbnails and you'll see it. It's just, you know, you have to. What are you going to do? Be like mad, right? Everyone has to put on their face, right? For the world. And and so when you're an actor or you're a dancer, or, you know, or whatever your job is and you're being seen by the public, they're always going to tell you to smile. People like people who smile. That's just the way it is. Um, and so that fake smile that you show the world. And let's say you see a performer and you're really smitten with him or her. Seeing that person on stage it's really like you're seeing the person wearing a mask, whether they're actually wearing a mask or not. You're kind of seeing that mask, right, according to what the brand is talking about. And that is um, also probably a good way to describe the scent. It's like the, the scent is anonymous in a way. Um, uh, it is, yes, it's an amber. Um, there's thousands of ambers out there, it feels like. Um... It's an amber with a Middle Eastern twist. There's thousands of ambers out there with a Middle Eastern twist. Um, and, and so while this tango dance is going on, it's like not only are you just getting little whiffs and bits and suggestions, but the fragrance um, is fe feels like you're watching or dancing with someone who is wearing a, a mask. If not a literal mask, the side of them that they're showing to you is false, okay? Okay. Uh, and, and so the fragrance has a little bit, I think, of an identity crisis, in my opinion, because at times, 
the marketing and the branding just doesn't vibe with the experience when when I wear it. All right. So again, it's described as this crescendo, right? Um, drenched in stinky animalic sweat because you're so enthralled with the other person and this booziness, you're intoxicated, right? And and true to be fair, because again, I'm Switzerland. I want to be in the middle. Um, I want to be uh, a referee. I don't want to put too much. Part of this channel is documenting my experience in the fragrance journey, and part of it is being an objective reviewer. So I put my objective reviewer hat on, and I will tell you that at times, the amber does give off a slight boozy element, but I think they overemphasize it in the write-up, in my opinion, as most brands do. Um, but there is a little bit of a slightly boozy vibe. Other times, I think sometimes the cumin, when it hits you, depending on when you get that waft in the dry down, most of the times you're going to get it within the first five to ten minutes of the fragrance. That's just the way that the fragrance breaks down to me. But sometimes I feel like you'll get a little bit of a cumin hit later on. And sometimes that cumin hit, especially in the opening, is going to remind you a little bit of the old school uh, vintage, not vintage, but when it was cool to do, a, to do an oud fragrance, right? And some folks tried to do like a heavy, spicy combo with cumin and oud, right? And, and sometimes you're going to get this idea of this um, vintage Middle Eastern style cumin oud combination because um, you know, it's, um, that oud accord is there. There's no doubt about it. And, and so when the mask slips, if you will, and you really start to see Cecile Zerokian's other creations in, um, Tango, you start to see, like I said, the Turkish or Damask Rose in Epic Woman. Um, and look at the notes in common in Epic Woman, by the way, cumin, cinnamon, rose, amber, patchouli, vanilla, guyacwood. Epic Woman actually has an oud note listed, okay? So, um, I'm not saying that Tango is just a copy of Epic Woman, because it's not. If you know Epic Woman, Epic Woman has a heavy geranium note, which is not listed here. There is also a, a lovely note of tea, uh, which if you liked the tea in Silver Mountain Water by Creed, you'll probably really like the tea in here. Um, and, and so this goes much heavier on the ambers, even though there is amber here, um, there's also iris here. There's no iris in Tango. Uh, so you can see their different scents, but I can also see her taking bits and pieces of Epic to create Tango and amping certain things up. Okay. Turning the dial a little bit heavier on the things like, uh, the cumin, which there, there is cumin here as well. Um, turning the dial heavier up on the um, ambers or, you know, that kind of thing, right? The patchouli turned up a little bit more. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if whenever she was asked to create Tango, she went back to something that she felt very comfortable with. I also wouldn't be surprised if when she was asked to create Shaduna by Pure Distance, that she went back to something she felt very comfortable with. That was a good seller for the brand. I think this was a huge hit for Mask Milano, right? So why should she go away from this DNA? Uh, in Shaduna, the, uh, the common um, sort of marketing here is like Middle Eastern styled sand dunes, okay? Uh, and so Shaduna, I guess I could, maybe that's a just pure coincidence, but that's an easy way for me to remember it. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, actually, excuse me whilst I hydrate, so I don't have to cough in your ear. So, um, the reason I bring that up is I just think it's important to know your reviewer's taste, okay? I've said that before, um, and I have said I like Tango, I like Epic Woman. I think Epic Woman's the best, right? Um, but that smoky, spicy, leathery aspect that sometimes comes out, especially into the dry down, um, and these sparkly sort of resins that hit you almost like a reflection of a sequin dress. So the woman doing the tango, since we're staying on this ridiculous metaphor, um, a light hits the sequin dress and, and just glimmers, right? As she spins, you see all these glimmers that hit you as you're, as you're watching how beautiful she is or whatever it is, right? Um, and that's the way that the resins and the ambers kind of feel. They just feel a little sparkly from time to time but very warm and accepting and, and easy to wear. And uh, I like the ambery warmth and the glow, but again, I have a problem. The mask slips continuously with Tango because there's an amber that came out 
in 2005, nine years before Tango came out. And it's called Ombre Russe, which I own a bottle of. And I love this. This is one of my favorite am one of my favorite contemporary modern ambers. I think um, Mr. Corticiatio, Cortacciatio, um, is a genius. I love and I love the way he does the animalics. He uses a heavier hand than what Cecile Zerokian has used in Tango. Um, and there's very interesting notes in here which keep me enthralled. There's a vodka champagne combo. There is a um, ambergris in here that smells very natural, okay? Uh, and I'm a big fan of Parfum d'Empire. I'm going to start reviewing some of these because this house deserves the love. But um, this amber and tango are both in a category where they don't smell exactly the same, but they're close enough where I wouldn't buy a bottle of this because I have this. I also wouldn't buy a bottle of this because I have this. I also wouldn't buy a bottle of Tango because I have this. So there is, we're starting to get into that value for money thing, right? For me. And um, while I've enjoyed wearing this decant, the parts that I like are too subdued, okay? Um, I uh, I need a little more crazy in, in my Tango dance, maybe. I need a little more uh, oomph. I need, you know... I need, uh, I need the girl to give me a hip check real quick while we're dancing to keep me focused. I don't know what it is, or, or a booty check, if you will. I don't know. Um, but I need something to, to keep me more focused while, while this is all going on. And while I don't think this necessarily loses the plot, I get bored with, with Tango from time to time. That's 100% the truth of it. I like the fragrance, um, but every time I wear it, I'm just always a little bit not let down, but like, man, you know how sometimes you have those fragrances where you enjoy, you enjoy the fragrance. Um, but, and every time you wear it, you think you're going to start picking out all these other things. And then it's just kind of like a, eh, you know, it's nice. Uh, it's enjoyable. It's well-made, but it's nothing that I would go run out and buy a bottle of, especially because of some of the reasons I mentioned, um, uh, with things like Ombre Russe in the collection and Epic Woman in the collection and so forth and so on. And then the decant of Shaduna. These are, these are close enough to me this leans even more Middle Eastern, but I can see the Middle Eastern vibes in here. Um, and there are bits where I'm not saying you can't pick anything out because that's not fair because sometimes you'll get a little bit of that earthy patchouli. Um, sometimes you'll get a touch of that leather, which factors in. Um, sometimes you get a rogue waft of this incense, which uh, is just like a jolt. You know, you talk about like a jolt that wakes you up, like that hip check I was talking about earlier while you're doing the tango with the beautiful woman. Um, just imagine the jolt that a beautiful waft of incense comes as it curls into the, to the ambriness of Tango, but it's not enough. It's not, um, it, it doesn't happen enough to keep my attention. It, when it happens, I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Then it's gone. And, uh, then I'm back to kind of being bored and ready to leave the party again. So that's kind of my take on it. Unfortunately, I hate to do a review that isn't just perfectly stellar on a um, sort of rest in peace to Alessandro Brew night, but um, I have to be 100% honest with you guys, and that is 100% honestly my take. Now, my favorite from the house is going to be Russian Tea, which we will be reviewing very soon. I'm still working. I want to wear this a few more times before I do a full review. Otherwise, this would have been the review today, and I could have done a 100% positive review. Uh you know, on the rest in peace, Alessandro Brun night. Either way, it's a, um, you know, celebrating someone's life is a beautiful thing because most people, I think, while they're alive, they're not going to want people to be sad and, you know, down and uh, out when, if they pass away, they want people to celebrate their life, to be happy, right? And uh, to see them as like a shining beacon uh, of something to remember, some positive thing to remember. And this brand will be remembered from for Alessandro Brun. Uh, but on the other side, you can't help but feeling sad when someone like that passes away. There have been a lot of people passing away. And I didn't even mention, um, he passed away in f late February. Claude Montana passed away in late February. No one talks about that. Uh, at least I haven't heard very many people talking about Claude Montana passing away. Uh, I think he passed away in late February. I'll have to go check, take a look. But it was very recent. Um, so lots of big names in the fragrance industry have been dying off, unfortunately. So, um, I don't know what's going on, if it's just happenstance or, um, uh, but I have done some, uh, videos that are rest in peace videos, like Oliver Peshaw, I believe, passed away in 2023. I did a rest in peace video for him. Um, there have been, 
uh, some others. Rosen Dumatu, I did a I did a sort of condolences when he passed away. So we've had a lot of sort of tragedy in in the fragrance uh, game, and it's really like a brotherhood. It's really like a family. You know, you um, uh, like I've said before, ninety nine point nine percent of people who I interact with are uh, old school, what I would consider vintage people. Okay, they're people who are kind hearted. They they are um, they're friendly. They they uh, literally want to know you as a person because they're 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 interested in in caring and they they want to hear your story they want to share their collection with you they want to share their knowledge with you the fragrance community is ninety nine point nine percent great the point one percent that spews vitriol and hate and jealousy and anger um, they take up a larger proportion of the fragrance space than they should because they're the loudest, right? And a lot of times I'll just shut those people down. They get blocked, like instantly. I don't I don't play anymore. I used to say I'll never block anyone, but then some of the shit that people write in comments, it's absolutely insane. Um, and, and so I'll just block them. Uh, but 99.9% .9 of people in this community are absolutely fantastic, amazing people. Someone you'd want to sit down and have a beer with um, or a dinner with or get to, you know, ha hang out with, get to know them, do, do so, go play pool with them, go play, go bowling, I don't know, whatever, you go watch a ball game, whatever your thing is, right? There's a lot of really awesome people in the fragrance community. And I think when someone like Alessandro Bruin passes away, um, hopefully, I, I think as a community, we can use this time to reflect and come together uh, and reset. You know, if you're one of those people out there who is hateful, maybe look inwards to yourself. Is that the way you want to be remembered? Um, because as long as you're alive, you still have the time for the chance to change. So that's my um, that's that's my Ram speech in memory of Alessandro Brun, founder, co-founder of Mask Milano. So uh, on one hand, uh, a sad day, but also like a celebratory day to celebrate his life and the brand and, and what he leaves behind. Let me know what you think of Tango. Let me know what you think of their ouds. Maybe I'm not alone in being very let down, but I will do reviews on these ouds. Um, I mean, first of all, look at the set that it comes in. Like, uh, seriously, this is how you're going to send out uh, samples of a fragrance that go for $675 or whatever the hell it is, even if it's $500, but this is it in this little foam thing in this flimsy box, you gotta be kidding me. Um, so there's a lot that I did not like about this, not just the smell, um, but it, a lot was let a big letdown uh, from their Oud release. But uh, just felt like a money grab. But let me know what your thoughts are if you've had a chance to smell some of those Ouds. Um, I can't even get it, I can't even get it back in, it's so ridiculous. Um, anyways, so I appreciate everyone watching, commenting, sharing, liking, I mean we are, uh, slowly creeping up every single day. You know, I can see the subscribers being added. We're probably averaging a thousand subscribers every couple months now. Um, so the channel is definitely growing. I'm very happy to have each and every one of you with me along for the journey. It's a pleasure doing these videos. Um, and you know, sometimes I know, I, I know that feeling because this is part of the reason why I watch fragrance videos is sometimes you just want to, um, escape the craziness of the world all the crazy the, the world nowadays is so intense and there's so much awful things in the world sometimes you just want to escape something uh and you want to fall into something beautiful you know and fragrance gives you that i think it's one of the finest hobbies out there and this community gives us a sense, a sense of purpose a sense of literally a sense of community a sense of belonging friends um and people you meet and talk to and get to know and all that stuff. So I think it's an amazing hobby, an amazing community. I love doing these videos for you guys. I hope you took something out of this. I appreciate everyone watching. Cheers, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.